It's been almost a year since I recorded my initial review of the Surface Pro 3. I was looking at it from the point of view of artists and illustrators. I got a lot of questions specifically about Illustrator and how it worked, or in its case, didn't work, on the Surface. A lot's happened since that review came out. In fact, Illustrator's rolled out a huge update that added a lot of touch features directly into the app that makes it 110 times better. The touch mode is totally different than regular Illustrator. The touch mode actually seems like its own app living within Illustrator. It does this by using something called a touch workspace. What's a workspace? Good question, Brad. Illustrator has this idea called workspaces, and basically what happens in them is there's a workspace for painting, so it has all your paint tools in there. It has one for typography, so it has all your type tools already set up for you, and you can customize these things. Now, the new touch workspace is kind of the same idea, except instead of just giving you a brand new tools, it gives you a totally new interface like that's designed to work without a keyboard. In a lot of ways, this fundamental changes the way we use Illustrator. And there's good and bad to this because you're losing some tools because not everything would fit on this new interface, but you're gaining some other tools and functionality and features you otherwise wouldn't have. All right, so I'm just going to roll through them. This is like my top five things that I like about the new Illustrator Touch Workspace. Number one, it's really easy to use. Uh, it's kind of vague. Let me go into detail. When I first used Illustrator on the surface, one of my big beefs was that the hit points were just so hard. You only had like four or six pixels that you could hit with that stylus, it was next to impossible to actually get those. So in the latest version of Illustrator, it's really easy to hit or tap or click those touch points. I feel like I should have more to say about this, but Oh well. On to number two. They added a lot of buttons to the interface for things like delete and undo. When you stop and think about it, before Illustrator had these drop-down menus, and the drop-down menus had really, really small, like, clickable areas or tappable areas, and so you had to click down, and then you had, like, this tiny little area to hit undo or delete or something like that. And that's not the only thing. Just switching between files, there's a save button that's much larger, jumping between art forms, all those things are directly in this new interface. This whole thing kind of reminds me of when someone has this really big bulky website and then they make a mobile app and they have to cut out all the stuff that people don't really use. That's kind of like what Illustrator's done with the touch mode. Sure, there are some features I miss, but for the most part, like er, almost everything I need, like 80 to 90% of it is right there. Number three is they've come up with a completely new pen tool. The icon looks almost identical to the old pen tool icon, except it has this little line on it. So the only downside there is that I'm always picking the wrong tool. I can't tell them apart. I wish I could be like, okay, your new name is Wayne and your new name is Dale. The new pen tool, who we now call Wayne, has a lot of cool features to it. Wayne is really good at drawing arcy lines that are smooth and nice. In fact, in a lot of ways, I like using the new Wayne better than the old Dale. Oh, Dale, I didn't mean it like that. I still use Dale a lot. I still start by drawing things with Wayne, and then I'll use Dale to do, like, the intricate editing and stuff. Ugh, I shouldn't have named him. This is too confusing. Let's go on to number four. The paintbrush is kind of cool. I mean, the first thing you look at when you see the surface with the stylus next to it is you're like, can I draw on that thing? I like what they've done with the pencil and the paintbrush tool and editing those shapes. There's a certain level of pressure sensitivity that you expect from it, and it's right there, and it's spot on. You can also lock the angle of lines, so you can draw perfectly straight horizontal lines, perfectly vertical lines, you can draw lines on a 45 degree angle. You like cross hatching? They got you covered. There's also the addition of stencils. So if you want to draw this perfect curve, you can open up a stencil, zoom in on it, change its size, and draw your curve. This works like a real life stencil. I think I'm having a failure of imagination because I'm having a hard time envisioning how I personally would use stencils, but I'd like to see if you guys have used them in any of your projects. Send them on to me, I'd love to take a look. Number five, shape control. From time to time, I use Illustrator for wireframing or quick prototyping, and that's where these new shapes come in. Like, how do you draw a perfect shape without using a keyboard? Your square is gonna be kind of rectangly or not perfect. Well, this lets you lock the aspect ratio of any shape that you draw, so you can draw that perfect circle or perfect square. So say you want to use that same perfect shape over and over again, no problem. There's a duplication icon. So you, once you have that, you can just tap on the screen and create as many shapes as you want at the same size in the same shape. Like I said before, this is great for prototyping and you combine this with the pen tool features and you can quickly wireframe in the touch version of Illustrator, which is kind of cool. So that's my top five. Uh, I have more to say though. There's some other cool little features like the way they do the alignment tool is kind of neat and intuitive. And this is a kind of a cool thing that's uh, unique to the Surface Pro 3. As I flip the keyboard cover over, I can go from my normal mode and automatically go into touch mode and back and forth just like that, just by flipping the keyboard cover over. Oh, did I miss anything? I think I got it all. I probably missed something. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. In fact, please do. And also you can follow along on Twitter if you want updates on more videos and artwork that I'm doing in the future. Thanks.